Hi, I'm Adrienne Hill, and welcome back to Crash Course Statistics. We have to wait for a lot of things in life. We wait until we're old enough to live on our own, or go to college, or drive a car, and waiting can suck. And it's even worse when you don't know how long you'll have to wait. Luckily, in certain situations, probabilities can help you guess how long it might take something to happen, like getting a full house in poker, having your first daughter, or winning the lottery. <laughs> For example, you're eating from a box of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans during a fun, if risky, hangout with your friends. These jelly beans have some flavors that are awesome, like cherry and peppermint, and some not so awesome, like grass or boogers or vomit. Yeah. The problem, you don't know if you're going to get a good or gross flavor until you eat it. And you know that your affinity for this game will go away if you're ever unlucky enough to come across one of those vomit-flavored beans. Cinnamon. It's delicious. But how likely is it that you'll be able to eat four of those odd jelly beans before you get that dreaded vomit flavor and decide to get new friends? Turns out there's a formula to figure this out, the geometric probability formula. This formula comes from the geometric probability distribution, which looks similar to the binomial probability distribution that we talked about in the last episode. But they do something a little bit different. Geometric probabilities tell you the probability that your first success will be on your nth try. And success here just means the event we're interested in happens. It's not always a good thing. For example, the probability that your first vomit flavored jelly bean will be your fifth jelly bean. This means that the first four beans were not vomit flavored. Let's pretend the probability of getting a vomit flavored jelly bean is 5%. Then there's a 95% chance that you'll get any other flavor. As you might remember from the multiplication rule, our chance of getting four non vomit beans in a row is 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95 or 0.95 to the fourth. The probability of then getting the vomit bean is 0.05. So altogether, the probability of getting four non-vomit beans and then one vomit flavored bean is this, or about 4.07%. In a more general form, the geometric probability formula says the probability of the kth try being your first success is the probability of failure to the k minus one power times the probability of success to the first power, which which is what we just did in the vomit jelly bean example. The probability of the fifth try being your first success was the probability of five minus one, or four failures, and then one success. If we graph the geometric probability for all possible values of k, we get a geometric distribution that shows us the probability of each trial being the first time we get a success. For example, let's look at a section of the geometric distribution for finding the probability that each trial is the first time we'd eat a vomit flavor jelly bean. You'll notice that I said a section of, because the geometric distribution could go on forever. Technically, we could eat thousands of birdies beans and still not find any vomit flavored ones. In fact, that's pretty much what I hope when I eat them. It's just very unlikely, which we can see on our graph. As k increases, the probability of that being your first success gets incredibly low, mostly because you'll probably have found the flavor that shall not be named already. Let's look at another example. You're finishing up basketball practice, and your coach announces that you'll have to make one free throw before you can leave. You're really bad at free throws, and you have a 20% probability of making any given shot. So we can calculate the probability that the first shot you make is your 10th shot. Plugging everything into our formula, we discover that the probability of this particular scenario is this or about 2.7%. The geometric distribution for this example looks like this, which gives us all the probabilities that a certain trial is the first time you make a shot. But you'd also get to leave if you made it before your 10th shot. To calculate the probability that you'll have to shoot 10 or fewer free throws before you make one, we can add up all the geometric probabilities from one up to 10. This essentially tells us the probability that it takes k or fewer tries before your first success, which you might remember from when we talked about cumulative distributions. A cumulative geometric distribution is incredibly useful, because often when we ask questions about how long we have to wait for a certain outcome, we want to consider whether it happens before the nth trial. Like we said, whether it's the first or 
10th shot, you still get to leave practice. And it turns out there's an 89.3% chance that before your 10th shot, you will have made a basket. That makes for a total of about 92% chance that you'd make it on or before your 10th shot. If you wanna find the average number of shots you need to take before you score, you can use the geometric distribution to calculate its mean, which is one divided by the probability of success, or this. The mean number of shots we'd need to take before we made our first would be one over 0.2, which is one over one fifth, or five. And this makes some sense. The smaller the probability of success is, the more tries we'll need on average before we get a success. For example, if there's only a 10% chance that we'd make the shot, we're really, really bad basketball players, we'd now need to try an average of one over one tenth, or 10 throws, before we sink that perfect shot. The mean and cumulative frequency of the geometric distribution can help you weigh your options. Say you're at Target and you see the display of Pokemon cards. You really want that Pikachu card. But let's say that the probability of getting one is only one in 200. You have enough money to buy four packs of cards or Star Wars Episode Six on Blu-ray. Star Wars guarantees Ewoks, Pokemon means maybe Pikachu. You're really into small, cute animals. Small, cute animals with static ability are even better. You want that Pikachu. So is it worth it? If each pack of Pokemon cards has 10 cards, you'll have 40 cards, each with a one in 200 chance of being a coveted, very lovely Pikachu. The probability that you wouldn't get a Pikachu card until your 40th card is only about 0.04%, but the cumulative probability that you get a Pikachu on your 40th card or earlier is about 18%, which isn't terrible. So now you're left to decide whether it's worth it to forego an evening with Ewoks for an 18% shot of getting your beloved Pikachu. And that part is something statistics can't decide for you. Before we finish up probability, let's look at a really fun statistical paradox, the birthday paradox. There are 365 birthdays that anyone can have, and we're not gonna count leap days to keep things simple here. So let's say there are 20 people in your classroom. What's the likelihood that there would be any shared birthdays? To me, it seemed like it'd be pretty low. Let's assume that there's an equal probability of having a birthday on each day of the year. That's not quite true, but it's close enough. The first person we look at has a 100% chance of having a unique birthday, simply because we haven't looked at anyone else's birthday yet. The second person also has a pretty high chance of having a unique birthday. They could be born on any of the 364 days on which person number one wasn't born. So there's a 364 out of 365 chance of having a unique birthday. Similarly, person three can be born on any of the 363 days on which neither person one nor person two are born. So there's a 363 out of 365 chance that they'll have a unique birthday as well. And this pattern continues for all the people in the room. By the 20th person, there's a 346 out of 365 chance that they have a unique birthday. Using the multiplication rule, we know that the probability of all these events happening, in other words, each person having a unique birthday is the product of all these probabilities. So the probability that everyone has a unique birthday is about 59%. That means that the other 41% of the time, at least two people will share a birthday. Once you get up to a group of 70, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that someone will share a birthday with someone else. This is one of those instances where statistics trumps my intuition and a good reason to be prepared for the possibility of double cupcakes if you have a big class. Probabilities are important. They're things we use all the time. When you're at your local diner and see those super cool crane machines, you might estimate the probability that you can snag that sweet stuffed otter by the time your food arrives and whether it's worth your time and money to even try. Or you can use them to figure out that on average, you'll probably have to wait a long, long time before you win the California State Lottery, like a really long time. On average, it should take you about 15 million tries. That's a lot of lotto tickets. Brandon made me say that. Geometric probabilities and probabilities in general allow you to guess how long you'll have to wait for something so you can decide whether it's worth it. As the famous mathematician Pierre Simon Laplace once said, probability is basically just common sense reduced to calculus. It makes one appreciate with exactness that which accurate minds feel with a sort of instinct often without being able to account for it. In other words, it allows us to quantify things we already feel. Probability assigns numbers to common sense, and we all could use a little more of that. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.
Crash Course Statistics is filmed in the Chad and Stacy Immigholt studio in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it's made with the help of all these nice people. Our animation team is Thought Cafe. If you'd like to keep Crash Course free for everyone forever, you can support the series at Patreon, a crowdfunding platform that allows you to support the content you love. Thank you to all our patrons for your continued support. Crash Course is a production of Complexly. If you like content designed to get you thinking, check out some of our other channels at complexly.com. Thanks for watching.